Renewable stocks are absolutely tanking right now. On my live stream on Friday, I talked about this monthly paying renewable stock with over 5% yield in this moment called Northland Power. In fact, it was one of the first stocks I ever bought. I want to provide some further updates on that. We'll look at Brookfield Renewable Partners and then we'll take a skew of the entire renewable stock sector, some of the mega caps and what ones are actually performing well, but it's been a bit abysmal in this higher interest rate environment. In fact, Northland Power is now almost trading back to the levels I was buying it at as one of the first stocks I ever picked up back in 2014. In fact, it's wiped out most of the capital gains and is currently yielding at 5.11% with roughly an 8 uh, PE right now, which seems pretty favorable. From the peak to trough here, the stock's down about 53%. Now, is this a buying opportunity of a lifetime or a falling knife that we should not be touching? That is the real question here. And I kind of read through this after briefing on it on my live stream. And, and I think there's just a lot of things at play here that are unfortunately hindering the company because they said basically Spain had recent regulatory changes enacted in June of 2023 that impact to the timing of their revenue, but they have a lot of projects coming online that should help pick some of that revenue up. But they did uh, basically reaffirm the lower end of their adjusted EBITDA, adjusted free cash flow, and free cash flow guidance range, uh, range for 2023, despite the impact of the recent regulatory change in Spain. So I don't think things are going to get much worse if they come in line with their guidance. But taking a look, going from $1.2 billion to about $109 billion, it's not the hugest decline in the six-month end, from $556 million to four hundred seventy-one million for the three-month end. And it's not like the end of times, I think, for Northland Power here. But what happens is the market over projects negative revenue growth. If things start to go down like it did in the tech crash, you remember Facebook, Meta, Google, all these companies tanking miserably because they were over projecting how much these stocks would drop. And then as soon as the tide changed and they said, hey, things aren't that bad, we're still growing, not like we were, but we're still growing, boom, over projected it into the future and took a lot of those companies back to all time highs. Hell, even Apple's at all time highs and that company wasn't even hitting new revenue record numbers, right? The only thing that scares me a little bit here is they don't offer dividend growth. Instead, uh, they offer a dividend reinvestment plan where they think they give you like 3% discount on the reinvested shares, which leads to further dilution in the stock, uh, which also hinders when the stock goes negative like it is now. And I would also like to look at some of their write downs to make sure they have enough uh, free cash flow to kind of cover this because we can see right now their free cash flow at, uh, you know, sitting at what is a 41 million versus total dividends declared of 75 million. Um, you know, you want to make sure that these can be covered and perhaps they're doing some write downs against that free cash flow, giving up some extra room. But from a quarter a year prior, they had lots of room from that uh, free cash flow. So something to double check. I'm sure they have the capability to cover and it might just be write downs or amortization and depreciation costs. But again, no dividend growth. Can't expect anything from that here. It's a good monthly payer, especially at a 5% yield. But from an asset to liability standpoint, $14 billion. Uh, in total assets against 9.4 in total liabilities, meaning they have what maybe five six billion in underlying assets, and the company trades for right around its net asset value at around 5.9 billion. So what I would do here it, for me again, if you like the company enough, cost average probably a great place to be buying it. For me, if I wanted to capture the potential upside, like the tech stocks went on that rally, wait for things to level off and perhaps revenue to start to pick back up. The stock might jump 30, 40, 50 percent, who knows? But you can start buying it from there, knowing that at least from there the market will start over projecting it into the future and cap capture some of the rally back. Now talking about Brookfield Renewable Partners, another favorite out there with 5% dividend yield. Um, this one's actually, I think a little bit more favorable it is trading down uh, from $58 at its peak down to 35 where it sits now. Again, let's just analyze the financials. I mean, you're talking about um, from an asset to liability standpoint, we got what? This one's huge, 64 billion versus total liabilities of 37.7 billion. I think it's almost 50-50 leveraged. It's um, in a bit of a healthier place, I'm going to say, than perhaps something like Northland Power. But again, this one has been able to increase the dividend. I'm not sure what the drop here was. This looks like a special dividend, perhaps. Could be wrong. But either way, going from $0.19 cents, uh, all the way up to $0.34. Cents. Pretty nice growth from uh, 2014. What's that growth rate? Actually, we're going to the dividend score here. Um, so yeah, about 5.2% dividend growth rate. Nothing substantial. But what's going on with this company? Taking a look at the uh, revenues here, again, quarter over quarter on a yearly basis, declining from 1.2 billion from 1.27 in 2022. On the six months, still seeing some growth here though, but these things are all slowing down. And I think that's just generally what's freaking everyone out. Even though this company, their, their capacity for megawatts produced is actually continuing to go up, which is uh, kind of impressive because with Northland Power, um, I do believe it's actually gone down. I think they list some of the megawatt production in here somewhere. 
Um, yeah, I mean, we can see their total megawatt production from year over year has actually declined because they're spinning some of it off. So Brookfield, I think, maybe in a healthier place nonetheless. Um, but this one is way more diversified as well. I mean, Northland Power is globally diversified, but I think this one goes beyond because uh, they do what wind. They also do hydro production, solar, uh, and distributed um, generation and storage. I think uh, Northland Power gives you some exposure to Spain when it comes to natural gas as well. Um, but this thing is a massive conglomerate in comparison, right? But putting those aside, I mean, you look at something like Enphase, really popular in the investing community from the likes of me, Kevin, down 58%. You look at something like Solar Edge here. I mean, this one's down pretty dramatically here. 50%, $10 billion market cap, 34 PE, end phase, 35 PE, $18 billion market cap. Next era energy, uh, this one I think is a little bit more stabilized, but it's, it's not as purely focused in the renewable space, but still down 24%. But one that's crushing it, First Solar, man. This one trades at a hefty premium, $22 billion market cap. And this is the exemplifier about when you're crushing numbers, how the market over projects it into the future because on a five-year basis this thing is flying to the freaking moon and back and take a look at this first and foremost assets minus liabilities right 8.9 billion in assets against 2.9 billion in liabilities so 5 billion in underlying assets way better leverage than the others but with only 5 billion in underlying assets for 22 billion dollar market cap this one trades way above its net asset value but in a bit of a different game altogether firstly let's take a look at those revenues can we go up here and find those revenues yeah net sales did 810 uh, what is that probably in the million I would presume, or thousand, yeah, no, in the million, 810 million for 620 million this quarter last year, 1.3 billion for the six month end uh, versus 987 million. I mean, this company is just absolutely on a freaking tear. Gross profits are pretty reasonable here as well. Taking a look though at their projects, kind of what they've done here, this one is purely focused on solar and it seems more to the production of it rather than the actual manufacturing and management of facilities uh, that generate the power. Because we can see that they're putting in uh, a facility in uh, India, Ohio expansion and R&D facility, their fifth US facility. They got one in Alabama that's expected in 2024. And it seems like they're just selling this to people that probably want solar on their roofs, generating huge amounts. Series 7, 425 megawatts produced to just in the second quarter alone. I mean, some of these numbers are pretty astounding, to say the least. Um, but it's wild at how hard anybody that wants to actually pure play and own wind facilities and, and high, hydro production from renewable resources are just getting absolutely clobbered right now. So, I mean, First Solar, it just seems to be an outlier, but one that's kind of mitigating itself from that risk of being management um, and, you know, having to leverage the huge amount of debt to do it. So, I mean, it comes into that that fact that if you think you know enough about these companies, Northland Power, Brookfield, they could be trading at really good discounts if you want them as a piece of your portfolio for much higher uh, income. But you definitely going to want to cost average and just be cautious. Maybe just wait to see what earnings do. That's what I would do and pick up once things level off a bit, just so you're not trying to catch a falling knife. But I'll leave it up to you. I'd love to know what you think about the renewable sector in that comment section below.